Ah, welcome. Welcome to Thursday. Today is another bandana day. And what we have for today is some more news about uh, patch 9.2.5, i.e. season 4 of this expansion. This last makeshift season pulled out by Blizzard as a surprise. We have some news. We have some news about the fated uh, raid system that comes out in the next season, as well as the Mythic Plus changes with the new affix and a few other things. A few other things worth uh, ugh, talking about for today. Let's just start with the shorter of changes, the smallest of changes, which is the fated addition to the raid. We haven't gotten much besides the confirmation of the item level and a few other confirmations that we kind of guessed before. Uh, Fated Raid is what is going to be changing one raid out of the three available every week. So uh, when, for example, the Custom Natria Raid is Fated, the other two are in their old version. They're going to have the old loot table with the lower item level. And then you move over to Sanctum, and now it's Custom Natrias and Sepulchre's turn to be their old selves. Uh, the, the item level increase is, as expected, a 26 item level jump. Just like in uh, Castonatria, Mythic item level was 226, and we had a 26 item level jump into Sanctum because it was 252, and then another 26 item level jump in Sepulchre because it was 278, this jump is going to bring you all the way up to 304 item level. So we, we already went through this. We already went through this when we speculated about this in this tidy uh, list for item level jumps, and this is pretty much what has been confirmed is going to come out in 9.2.5. This is going to be the item level of the dungeons and the raids and PvP and whatnot. We are not going yet uh, too much in detail about the raid affix that's going to be coming in 9.2.5, the, the new special addition to the raid mechanics. We will look at that uh, a, a little bit later on when we, have the, when we have the full final system ready to be tested. What we can test, however, and is already uh, fully working, is the season for Mythic Plus affix. The seasonal affix called Sh Shrouded. The seasonal affix called Shrouded is what is going to be available in the next season. So this affix is very similar to what we have gotten so far in this expansion, the entirety of the expansion, which is defeat mini boss, gain buff. Yeah, you defeat Prideful, you get your buff, you defeat the mini bosses of Tormented, you get your buff, and then you defeat the mini bosses of Encrypted, and you get your buff, right? So this one is the same, but toned down, a little bit lower down in value, a little bit lower down in magnitude, because what happens in uh, Season 4? This happens. You're walking around, everything is looking fine, and then you see some suspicious black-purple swirlies around a certain mob. You look closer, and it turns out the mob is disguised. You attack the disguised mob, and it's gonna turn into a Dreadlord. That is it. You defeat the Dreadlord, and you get your buff. This Dreadlord has three main abilities. One, it's gonna be attacking the tank and healing for 250% of the damage done. So you want to use mitigation, defensive, to try to take as little as possible. And then you have the two party-wide uh, mechanics. One is a frontal. It's a frontal that is going to reduce the healing taken by 35%, so the tank wants to keep it away from the group. And lastly, you have a mechanic very similar to what you have already seen in Lords of Dread. These outward expanding paddles, which are going to put you to sleep if you get hit by them. That's the other mechanic. The other special thing about this affix is that all of the ones you discover are going to be Dreadlords, except for one. There is one special Dreadlord, which is a mini-boss, Zulgamax. In this case, for example, the one hiding was behind one of the giants, right? One of the bigger mobs in the zone. Now, this mob is slightly more interesting, mostly because it has different mechanics than the smaller guys. The, the, the most dangerous ones are going to be the blood barrier. The mob is going to protect itself with a blood barrier while trying to heal. So you have to break the barrier to stop the healing. There is a Hypnosis Bat, it's going to spawn a bat casting Hypnosis, and if you don't kill the bat in time, it's going to mind control one of your friends or yourself. And a couple of other abilities like the Shadowy Eruption, reducing healing taken by 70% for 10 seconds. Now, I was talking about the buffs that you receive in defeating these Dreadlords. 
When you start the dungeon, you will get an NPC asking you which of the buffs you want. The buffs available are 2% crit haste or versatility or 6% mastery, or depending on your class, 69 I think it is mastery, whatever. A little bit more mastery, okay? Once you have chosen what you want, every Dreadlord you will defeat in the key is going to give you one application of this bonus. So 2% of your secondary, 6% mastery. Except for the miniboss, Zulgamox is going to give you 3 stacks, so 6% of the secondary stats or 18% of mastery. This is what you will be gaining when you defeat the Dreadlords. There doesn't seem to be a clear cap at the very least now. I've seen it go up to 11 stacks, 12 stacks, 13 stacks, which means, you know, 24, 26% more crit or haste, for example, which is quite big. There is also a tiny addition, which is a little bit of a help for healers who will be sorely missing the Ur Relic buff from Mythic Plus, as you know. Uh, mana problems are a thing of the past this season because healers just get all of their mana back uh, whenever you defeat Ur, so it's very handy. Uh, to try to make the transition into this new season a little bit less hurtful, Blizzard will also give you a buff when you defeat the Dreadlords for 5 seconds, giving you back 6% health and mana every second. So it totals out to being 30% of your mana back, which isn't quite as good as Ur, but at the very least it's something. This buff, by the way, gets increased to full, 100% health and mana over 5 seconds if you are defeating the mini boss. So that, that's the old Ur, that's the old Ur relic region, just for one mob in the entire dungeon, uh, unfortunately. So this, this new system, as I said, is similar but toned down to the rest, because these buffs while they are strong and they will accumulate over time, so if I told you right now, dude, what do you think about 26% more haste? You know, it looks massive, right? But it gets there to the end of the key. So as opposed to, for example, what you can do with the buffs of Prideful, the buffs of uh, Encrypted in particular, they are smaller, especially because they don't even force, they don't even cause you to change your route. None of this is going to particularly make you change the route, uh, right? In Prideful, you might have wanted to change the route to hit the Prideful at a sweet spot, right before a boss, for example, or right before a big pool. Meanwhile, this season, for example, you wanted to take the wall relic for the speed, for the skips, for example, that was another nice changing of the route. But in this new season, this new affix won't really cause you to change too much of the route or the path, the planning of the key, so it seems to be more toned down. Perhaps because we get older dungeons, perhaps because we are getting Karazhan, we are getting Mechagon, we are getting Grimrail, Depot and Iron Docks, they don't even... Blizzard doesn't want to, to, to also change routes. What routes? You didn't even have the routes before in the first place because these dungeons are new to this expansion, so there is no point in making an affix that makes you change the routes. That's maybe what they went for. Lastly, lastly, we can mention something in case you start getting worried about the possible tracks you have to do. Blizzard is adding portals. Blizzard is adding portals to Oribos to get your teleports to Karazhan, to Gorgrond and to Mechagon. Now, these can also be used, by the way, to just travel normally in those zones whenever you want to, but they are there, of course, primarily to allow you to travel to the dungeons more easily. Uh, unfortunately, in case you were wondering, no, obviously, there is not going to be a teleporter to go back. So, once you take the teleport to go in Gorgrond, you are there uh, for the key, and then you have to Hearthstone back or whatever. You, you don't get to go back also for free. So, with this being said, these are the news and the additions we have gotten so far in the PTR for the next patch. As I said, the patch seems to be somewhat close. It seems to be... I said it was going to be the last week of May, which is like in 10 days, in two resets. Perhaps it's a little bit too early. Maybe I overestimated the speed of this patch coming out. But even if it is in two resets, it should be somewhat close. Anyways, remember, just in case you're confused, no... The patch coming out does not mean the new season starts, does not mean the new raid system comes out, the new season of Mythic Plus comes out, even if the patch comes out, all of the stuff related to the season is going to be introduced later on, months into the patch, okay? So that's worth remembering also every time about the release of this weird patch, because it's nothing like we have gotten before. 
So with this clarification, it was all for this Thursday. Thank you guys for watching the video and for helping to grow and support the channel in whichever way you can, which also includes obviously liking and commenting down below, as well as if you're in the mood for subscribing to the channel, I'm also available on Twitter over here and on Patreon for extra support over here. Okay. Thank you guys again. Uh, see you guys soon. And in the meantime, I just hope that we don't get to end of BFA levels of corruption stat stacking with this, uh, with this new affix. I hope not.